So as the war in Gaza is winding down, things are heating up between Israel and Hezbollah. Israel may have just carried out one of the most creative attacks on Hezbollah they have ever done. We'll get into all the details on that, but first we need to see how we got here. This weekend has been very intense in Israel. I'm Ben and this is The Israel Guys. Over the weekend, Israel struck a number of targets inside of Lebanon, as you can see in these videos. Of course, even though they are fighting an actual war, at this point, the IDF continues to warn civilians before they strike. This is a photo of a leaflet dropped by IDF telling civilians where to go to stay safe from the strike. Of course, this means that terrorists as well are able to flee by the same warning, dampening the effects of the strike. Uh, but this is the way the IDF rolls. This came on the heels of a large barrage of rockets fired yet again by Hezbollah at Israeli population centers, as you can see in these videos. The Iron Dome working overtime to defend Israel. I'm going to say it again, it is crazy that people continue to treat this like it's not an actual war, uh, that a sovereign state is supposed to just live with another state firing thousands of missiles over their border into population centers and just be okay with spending millions of dollars to shoot them down uh, just because kids only die every once in a while, I guess. Um, the Air Force was able to locate several of the missile launchers and take them out from the air, as you can see in this video here. They managed to hit one that was loaded and about to fire uh, in southern Lebanon. You can see them striking the rocket launcher and then rockets actually firing off as a result of the strike into the air and blowing up. And then a secondary explosion happening as munitions, I guess, that were stored in the location blew up as well. After the strikes, Hezbollah managed yet again to fly drones into Israeli airspace. Apparently, some of them flew about 30 kilometers into Israel without being intercepted, uh, eventually falling into open fields. Others were shot down. Thankfully, it seems like no one was injured from these attacks specifically. Also, today, the Sheen Bet, basically the Israeli FBI, uh, foiled a plot by Hezbollah to assassinate a former Israeli senior defense official. They didn't name who the official was, uh, that was targeted, but Arab channels are reporting that it was former IDF chief of staff Aviv Kohavi. Um, we don't know if that's true or not, though. The Sheen Bet said in a statement that they seized an explosive device attached to a remote detonation system, as you can see in this photo here. It was supposed to be detonated using a cell phone and a camera from Lebanon, but thank God the Israeli official is okay, and this assassination attempt was a complete failure. Uh, so that brings us up to the story that I teased at the beginning. Details are breaking as we speak, but apparently today, uh, Israel somehow managed to hack into dozens or maybe even hundreds of pagers or some kind of communication device, maybe cell phones, details are unclear as of this point, and blow them up. These are pagers or cell phones used by Hezbollah terrorists inside of Lebanon. Um, and you can see in these videos right here, the chaos that is erupting all over Lebanon. According to the Jerusalem Post, the Hezbollah official speaking on the condition of anonymity said the detonation of pagers was the biggest security breach the group has been subjected to in nearly a year of war with Israel. According to reports, the phones were called, well, phones or pagers, Air Media is saying pagers. I'm also seeing phones. Um, if they were called, I'm not sure how they were pagers. Uh, also unaware, I was unaware that anyone actually used pagers in 2024, but whatever communication devices these were, media reports are saying that they were called by Israel seconds before the explosions happened to increase the chance that the terrorist would be close to the device before it exploded so that they could be maximally wounded. We'll get into the rest of the details on this crazy story in just a second. But first, do you want to get involved in supporting Israeli sovereignty in Judea and Samaria? Blessed by Israel provides a way to have the amazing products from small family-owned businesses in the biblical heartland 
delivered to your doorstep. While you enjoy the wonderful goodness of the land, you can know that your purchases are contributing to a strong Israel. Your purchases of olive oil, honey, ceramics, cosmetics, jewelry, and so much more are an investment in the pioneering families of Judea and Samaria who are rebuilding their homeland. Head over to blessedbyisrael.com to purchase beautiful boutique products and make your impact today. Use the code INVEST for $5 off your first order at blessedbyisrael.com or click the link in the description below. Reuters journalists are reporting they saw terrorists lying in the streets of Beirut covered in blood and ambulances rushing through the streets amid widespread panic. Residents of Beirut are also saying explosions were happening every 30 minutes or so. So crazy stuff there. As of right now, Israel hasn't openly taken responsibility for the attack. Uh, We'll have to see what happens in the next couple of days. It's a wild time we live in when you never know where the next attack will come from. It's crazy that warfare has gotten this creative that Israel could carry out a cyber attack like this um, on uh, Hezbollah terrorists that when they least expect it, their phones or communication devices or whatever they're using just randomly explode all over Lebanon. The Reuters reporter said that that one reporter said they personally witnessed about 10 terrorists just laying on the streets of Beirut. Uh, And as all the reports are coming in, we're hearing, I think, confirmed at least 70 terrorists impacted and the count is continuing to go up. So we don't know how many will be in the final tally, but it is a lot. Um, That is assuming that Israel did this. I mean, Israel hasn't taken responsibility for it, but it seems pretty pretty likely that it is Israel as at this point. And it's just a super, super creative attack by the Israeli military on Hezbollah, an actual physical attack taking out terrorists, but also just absolute psychological warfare because from now on, nobody is safe anywhere in Lebanon and they don't know where the next attack will come from. Security analysts and officials are saying that things are on the brink of going much, much bigger with the war with Hezbollah. August has been the most intense month since October and when it comes to attacks by Hezbollah on Israel. Even U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said on Monday that the solution for a diplomatic solution with uh, Hezbollah in the north is running out. There are strong rumors that Netanyahu is going to replace Defense Minister Yoav Gallant with Gidon Tsar. Uh, this would give Bibi more support for a major operation in the north. Even Bibi's opposition on the left, Benny Gantz is pushing for a full-out escalation from Israel as the current situation on the northern border is completely untenable. Um, It seems like so far in this war, the government of Israel uh, has had its faith shaken in the military a bit. Um, I don't think you can face what Israel faced last October um, and not have that feeling. Also, Bibi has been really hesitant to escalate things in regards to Israel and Hezbollah, Uh, because of the possible death toll to Israeli civilians if Hezbollah were to launch thousands of rockets at Israel all at one time. Uh, This is something that the Iron Dome probably wouldn't be able to keep up with, um, and we would see a lot of Israeli civilians killed as a result. A lot of people have predicted this, and I think this is something that the government of Israel and the military are uh, very hesitant about. We don't want 10,000 Israelis dying in a war, even though Israel must take care of this problem that is Hezbollah. We don't want a lot of civilians to have to die, God forbid. Um, But on August 25th, Hezbollah was planning a massive attack on Israeli soil and the IDF absolutely cleaned house. They destroyed the vast majority of the rockets and drones and projectiles that Hezbollah was planning on launching at Israel uh, wholesale. It was the first time the current IDF have demonstrated their ability to win a major and complex victory over Hezbollah And I think that this is giving the military and government of Israel confidence. All that means that it is very possible Israel is moving towards a much more escalated situation in the north. Uh, We're seeing a lot of rumors confirming this. Also, we're moving into winter. Israel may want to take on an operation like this before winter comes. Otherwise, we'll have tens of thousands of Israelis still evacuated from their homes over their entire winter uh, before spring comes. Um, We need to be praying for protection over Israel, uh, over Israeli civilians. If an operation like this happens, wisdom for the military to know when to strike um, and for a complete victory for Israel with very little loss of life um, in a speedy manner. Remember that God is the protector of Israel, not the IDF. Obviously, we have to fight and do everything that we can. God's raised up a lot of amazing men and women in the Israeli military, but uh, ultimately our victory 
does come from God and God alone. Guys, before I go, I want to show you a quick video from a project we are working on and very excited about. You may not have heard about Israel's biblical heartland or even Judea and Samaria, but have you heard of the West Bank? How about the occupied territories? Yeah, I thought so. Today's mission is to get a real good up-close look at the real estate that the world is completely obsessed with. This would be one of the prime locations that a hostile terrorist organization, they would come to this point to launch attacks against Israel. It's one of the most significant and important discoveries of all times was made right here. This spot is in Judea and Samaria. The two-state solution is dead. Jews don't support the idea, Arabs don't support the idea. It would mean more violence and death for Israel and more oppression for the Palestinians who live here. Hey, look at all these cars. What in the world are they all doing here? Well, we're on the border. This is the border between West Bank, so-called, and Israel proper. All of the buildings that are in the Arab villages, around the Arab villages being built on empty land, majority of them are completely empty. Save the date, guys, September 29th. This is your chance to learn all about the complex issues of Judea and Samaria. Join a movement working towards a concrete path forward for Israel in regard to this very, very important place. Guys, don't forget to check out blessedbyisrael.com. The link is in the description. As always, stop listening to the lies and propaganda and connect with the truth of what is happening in Israel. We'll be back soon here at The Israel Guys. Thank you.